The next segment of factorization is the most important and most useful which we use for solving greater problems and for making and for simplifying greater or larger calculations that is use of algebraic identity. What is an algebraic identity? When I am talking about an algebraic identity or an identity it is a proven thing it is a proven equation it's a pattern of statement that that is true for all set of real numbers so an algebraic identity is an equation that is true for all the values of a variable occurring in it some algebraic identities are given below we divide the identities into two parts square identities and cubic identities and they and accordingly, they will help us to factorize a quadratic polynomial and a cubic polynomial. Starting with square identities, the first identity is the identity of a whole square. Identity of a whole square which states that the sum of the, the square of the sum of two numbers. The square of the sum of two numbers is equal to the square of the first number the square of the second number and twice the product of the two numbers. Most often the students get, get confused and they write x plus y whole square or a plus b whole square that is the sum of the, the square of the sum of the numbers as the sum of the individual squares which is wrong. I will elaborate about it here. The common mistake which takes place, if I ask you what will be 5 plus 2 whole square, obviously it will be 7 square equal to 49. But if you write 5 plus 2 whole square equal to 5 square plus 2 square, is it giving you 49? No, it will give you 25 plus 4 equal to 29. Therefore, 5 plus 2 whole square which is the square of the sum is not equal to 5 square plus 2 square which is the sum of squares. So, this is verbally this means or literally this means square of sum of numbers is never equal to sum of squares. They are not equal but this is a common mistake which generally occurs. Let us try to understand the concept of the whole square by using a very simple diagram. Suppose we and this will clarify the misconception of sum of squares and square of sum as the same thing. Suppose I have taken a square of side x by x and I have taken another square of side y by y. This is the square of side y by y. We have two squares. Now if I join them, if I join them, am I getting a complete square? So, if I simply add this square and this square, am I able to complete the full square that is x plus y? No, I am not able to complete the square. Now, I need to fill in the empty space. Only when I fill up the empty space, I will get a complete square that means only if I fill up the empty, empty space, I will get x plus y squared. I will get the complete big square x plus y. Now, what are these parts which needs to be filled up? Let us see. The, this part is has a length of y and has a breadth of x. It has a breadth of And this part has a length of y and again a breadth of x. 
So these two are the rectangles x into y with length x and breadth y. So from here we see that to complete x plus y whole square, I need the square of the first, then I need the rectangle xy, then add it to another rectangle xy, add it to another square y square. So this is my y square. This is x square. So x square plus xy plus xy plus y square completes my whole square. And that is why I have this square identity. Now let us move on to the next identity. I hope by now your concept has been cleared that x plus y whole square is not made up of x square and y square only. It has two more rectangles x y and x y that is the product of the two numbers twice. Now this next square identity is x minus y whole square which will be same as the first identity. Here y was a positive number, here y is a negative number which will make my middle term 2xy a negative number. The rest of the terms remaining same. The third identity. This verbally means the difference between the square of two numbers. The difference between the square of two numbers can be written as the product of the sum and the difference of the two numbers. This has great implications. These identities are very helpful in solving larger calculations or in calculating in a very simplified way. We will be doing all the examples one by one. The last one is x plus a into x plus b is equal to x square plus a plus b into x plus ab. This states that if my first number is same added to two different numbers. Then the product of the two expressions in which my first term x remains same is given by the square of the first term, the product of the two terms, product of the second two terms, then the sum of the two different terms multiplied by the first term. So if we do all these using an example, we will be able to see their implication and how they are useful in our day-to-day -day life. What is how is x plus y whole square makes my calculation easy. Suppose I have to find 304 square. Had I not known this identity, then I would have multiplied 304 with 304. But if I know x plus y whole square, the identity, I can split up 304 into two parts, which will be my x and y. That is 300 plus 4 whole square. And squaring 300 and squaring 4 is pretty easier than squaring 304 altogether. So, square of the first term will become 90,000, square of the second term will become 16 and 300 multiplied by 4 gives you 1200, that multiplied by 2 will give you 2400. Now, adding them is very easy, this is 90,000, added to 2000 will give you 92,400, 92,460, 16, even the addition becomes very easy. Similarly, an example can be taken for x minus y whole square. 
Suppose I have to find 999 square. My God, if I have to square 999, it would take toil. So instead of squaring 999, I can split 999 into two parts, 1000 minus 1 whole square and see how the calculation works so smoothly. So it will be square of the first term that will be 10 raised to the power 6. 10 raised to the power 6 is 10 lakh. 10 lakh minus 2000 plus 1. Square of the first term minus 2 multiplied with both the terms plus the square of the last term. Now 10 lakh minus 2000. 10 lakh minus 2000 will give you 9 lakh 98,000 plus 1. So it would be 9,98,001. See the calculation becomes so easy when we use identity. Let us try it with the third one. x square minus y square. Suppose I have to find the difference between 89 square and 88 square. Had I not known the identity, then I have to do so such long calculation 89 into 89 minus 88 into 88. But this identity makes it so easier. Using this identity, if I consider 89 to be x and 88 to be y, this can be simply written as 89 plus 88 into 89 minus 88. I, do, I can do the calculation mentally also without doing any rough work. So 89 plus 88 will give you 177 multiplied by 1 equal to 177. Just see the magic of identities. It makes the calculation so, so easier. Now moving to the last one. How is the last identity helpful to us? Suppose I have to find 108 into 92. The multiplication would take so much of time and toy. But if I know this identity, I can do it so easily. So 108 can be written as 100 plus 8 and 100 minus 8. I can use this identity as well as I can use this identity here. A plus B into A minus B. So using the first one, it could be 100 square minus 8 square and finding the square of 108 is easier than multiplying this. So I can use this identity both ways. Either I can use this part or this part. So 100 square will become 10,000 minus 64 and 10,000 minus 64 will give you 9,000 936, 9,936 will give you 10,000. Now, if I go by this identity, then it will be 100 square plus 100. Uh, if I take A plus B, it will be 0, 0 into 100 minus 8 square and that will give you the same result 9936. So, we have seen that how these identities help us to calculate faster. We now discuss each square identity one by one. We have seen the implication of the identities that how they help us to calculate in a better way and a faster way. Next, we learn that how to use these identities for factorization. How to factorize 
using square identities. So, last identity x plus y plus z whole square is x square plus y square plus z square plus 2xy plus 2yz plus 2zx. So, this is an extension of the first one when we have three different terms.